Hello everyone, let's talk about stationary Saturn, as today Saturn is stationary and tomorrow it's going to uh, turn direct. Now, here, here's it, here it is, and uh, we are going to look at the uh, transcendental celestial objects and also uh, what is dissolving that nice opposition between the, uh, the, the Lord of Karma, all those celestial objects and opposite Maruna, which is a TNO. First, let's talk about stationary planets. When do we say that a planet is stationary? Well, according to some astrological programs, whenever a, uh, a, a, a celestial object uh, slows down to about 15% of its normal or everyday uh, daily travel, we, we say it's stationary. Some say it's only after 10%. It doesn't really matter because uh, what happens in the sky, it's really an optical illusion. Um, the, 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 the celestial objects orbit around the sun, not around the earth. And uh, we are unable to recognize uh, elliptical orbits. Uh, for us, the globe, the, the celestial globe is a globe. So uh, what happens is that whenever uh, a celestial object uh, goes to a certain corner or, or curve in the um, in, a, in its elliptical orbit what you observe from 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 the earth plane i mean sitting down here and looking at, up in the sky is that uh some of the objects are just slowing down a bit then almost stopping okay and then turning backwards this is retrograde motion and after a while they slow down again again seem to be stopping and then turn direct and if we are lucky enough then uh, this could be a fifth uh, a, a fivefold movement actually with, with uh, pluto for instance quite quite often that it occurs um, not three times but five times uh, and you know um, i i believe that one single Pluto transit is enough uh, for a lifetime sometimes, but to to have an access point of five uh, direct hits, that's a little, little bit too much. But uh, let's see what's happening. It's kind of very similar to uh, to the to the um, process when you're sitting in your car, driving towards a destination, and all of a sudden realize that you have made the wrong turn and you are not going towards your destination, but you're moving away from it. What do you do? You're slowing down, you look into the rear view mirror, look, you look around, and then may, you make a U-turn and then go uh, into the opposite direction. That's exactly what the planets seem to be doing. And I'm sure that if you are a, a high and student of, uh, of karmic astrology or just regular astrology, you all know that retrograde planets behave inwardly. In karmic astrology, we say that all retrograde planets and celestial objects are karmic triggers. And a stationary planet is something that is, is very, sim very very dissimilar to, to uh, the retrograde motion because it is it seems to be stopping in its course. And by definition, planets are supposed to, to move around. Planetoi, the, the Greek word, uh, means to, um, to to move around. So whenever something is not doing what it is supposed to do, that's an unusual situation. Sorry for my, my voice. Uh, my younger son had his uh, wedding over the weekend and we, we had a really, we had a blast. I mean, we, we just, it was just a three day event and uh, I lost all my voice, <laughs> but <laughs> hopefully I'm, I'm going to recover soon because this, this is going to be an interesting week. Uh, uh, on the 13th, we are going to have a, another uh, important um, planetary configuration, which I'm going to talk about. Hopefully, uh, when I'm recording that portion, my voice is going to come back. Let's uh, take a look at this one. But we are ha I haven't finished the uh, uh, retrograde, I mean, the uh, stationary planetary uh, discussion. So in comic astrology, we say that whenever a planet is stationary, and it could be about Station about for 24 hours, sometimes 48 hours. It depends on the, the planet itself. Whenever it is stationary, 
it is greatly empowered in its original meaning. And today Saturn is stationary. So what are the main um, uh, important uh, significators for Saturn? Saturn is the Lord of Karma. It is the last of the visible planets. Uh, the, the ancients thought that uh, Saturn is is looking after time and space and uh, be beyond Saturn, you only have the chaotic void, nothingness. Of course, that turned out to be false because uh, we know that the solar system is much, much larger than just the orbit uh, uh, of Saturn. Actually, when uh, Uranus was discovered, the solar system uh, became three times bigger overnight because uh, uh, Uranus's orbit it takes 84 years and Saturn's is 29 and a half. So almost triple the, uh, the orbital period. And uh, as, as, uh, so it enlarged uh, or um, Uranus's uh, discovery enlarged the solar system. But if we go back to Saturn and Saturn's basic meanings, basic uh, delineatory meaning, we also have to say that it is uh, linked to borderlines, linked to uh, bases, um, tasks, duties, burdens, baggages, uh, chores, things that we have to learn about. We, the big life lessons are also linked to Saturn and all kinds of burdens that we need to carry. And you would say that this is really not very nice. Yes, but in the physical body, Saturn rules uh, the skin and also the spine and the skeletal system. So without all those things, we would be probably just nothing. So there, these are really important stuff. So whenever Saturn is stopping on its celestial course, we have the uh, ability to glimpse all this, to reflect on this, especially if you have placements at uh, six, seven degrees of the air and um, fire signs, you may be able to uh, perfectly utilize this moment. Now let's see those four uh, celestial objects that are also tightly conjunct Saturn. These are uh, conjunctions in the longitude, so they are approximately in the, within, within the uh, one degree uh, conjunct Saturn. Hiroshima, Imhotep, Hell, and Patientia on patience. Uh, Hiroshima is not a very nice archetype. Of course, it's linked to total destruction. destruction sorry, uh, especially uh, not limited to atomic uh, destruction, atomic. Um, um, demolition, but all sorts of complete demolitions, things that are uh, unable to uh, recover after the um, after what's happening, and uh, and Hiroshima was a horrible moment of humanity because we unleashed a power that later on we were unable to to. Um, um, control and a lot of innocent people died. So it's a complete demolition linked to a superpower and it's unleashed to everyone and everyone is suffering. That's what Hiroshima is. Imhotep on the other hand is a very different archetype. He was the um, builder, the pyramid builder for, uh, for Zoser, the pharaoh Zoser. And he was a, a polymath. He was not just a, a builder, a constructor, but he was also a, a healer and also a high priest. So it is someone with great knowledge, uh, with unique skills. So it's the opposite. It's the builder, why Hiroshima is a structure. Hell is the um, underworld goddess uh, of the um, northern uh, pantheon. So for the uh, northern uh, North uh, people, and her is a woman, and for many many years, many uh, uh, millennia, really, the underworld, both the underworld and the oceans, were the waters were ruled by a feminine deity, a goddess. So it's hell. She's she's feminine, and she signifies 
things that we would attribute to Pluto, but at the same time, uh, since it's a feminine archetype, it gives us the power to go beyond our, uh, our borderlines, Saturn, beyond our restrictions and go down deep and understand what's going on in the depth of our psyche and also our life. And then patience, paciencia, uh, the uh, goddess of patience, and also not just goddess, I mean, she is one of the main virtues, the cardinal virtues. And it gives you the potential to pay attention to everything and anything and to wait, to be able to wait for some kind of knowledge to arrive, some sort of uh, thing to happen, to finish, to, com to be completed, uh, for us to understand what we don't understand at the moment. And this is very uh, revealing because in this age, uh, people are not patient enough. People jump to conclusions immediately. Uh, the, of course, the media and the social media is really fueling this whole uh, terrible thing. I mean, I'm sure you just realized how all of a sudden this whistleblower uh, from Facebook started to, uh, to to tell tales about, you know, how uh, Facebook is not interested in um, uh, peace and and uh, it's actually fueling the discord between groups and people and whatever yes but why did she appear obviously uh for us to them we feel outrageous and demand even stricter censorship so don't be fooled by what's happening in the outside world because that's all bull okay just just bull okay the tech giants can do whatever they want and we fall from it uh, for them and we, we, we are simply um, behaving like they want us to behave. That is why it's important to keep our children away from this mess, this, I don't wanna use any bad language because uh, this, uh, I mean, sometimes I do, but um, I'm trying to be a decent human being and not use bad language, how is that? Okay, so this is a five food uh, conjunction, uh, quite ripe. Uh, with impact and with, not, with uh, meaning. And opposite it is Varuna. Uh, Varuna originally was a, a Vedic deity. Uh, originally she or he, I don't know exactly know. Uh, of course, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't, wonder here really doesn't care, it doesn't count. But uh, this uh, deity was the, create, the, god, the creator god. And then later on, uh, they attri attributed only the oceans and it. And in karmic astrology, it's a very interesting uh, little celestial object. Uh, it's a TNO, so it's a, it has a long orbital period over 300 years, I think, uh, 310. Uh, and we link uh, queen karma to this celestial object. What is queen karma? Well, uh, if you consider patriarchal structures and system, uh, if you had a uh, a ruler, okay, and that ruler, that monarch, had an, a, a, a child that was born outside wedlock, okay, that child, that uh, boy or girl became a bastard. On the other hand, if the, uh, the wife, okay, the, the, uh, um, the, the empress or the, uh, the queen delivered a child, that child was always an heir. Okay, no matter how she managed to do it, she if she had to produce an heir, she did produce an heir. So that is linked to Varuna. It always suggests that you need to, to produce, you need to give birth to the heir. Everyone is looking at you as a savior to be able to do that. And so you will, you will do everything in your power to achieve that goal. Now, Varuna is opposite uh, this fivefold uh, conjunction. What does it mean? It means that something is ripening, some, we are carrying some sort of offspring that is going to be born, but at the same time, there are great powers against, against Varuna, against the wish to produce an heir. And if you look around, uh, especially Western European countries, uh, people are unable to, to um, to have their natural offsprings. So they simply stopped reproducing and they are importing people from the Middle East and from African countries. 
in order to have the, the populace they need, especially um, uh, in uh, uh, um, industrial countries. So it's very, very sad that in this age, in the 21st century, we are unable to reproduce ourselves. And if you look at the mass sun conjunction, this is still very, very tight. And Mars is still in its detriment in Libra, uh, which means that it is unable to function properly as it's supposed to be. To, to function properly means that, uh, you know, create full, full blown wars. But of course, in comic astrology, when uh, a planet is in detriment, it means that you can utilize it uh, upon others for, for the sake of others. Now, Mars in Libra is the brilliant uh, diplomat. Okay? He's someone who is able to negotiate, who is, who is able to clash with someone else by words and words only, and, and uh, someone who doesn't need physical violence. The sun is highlighting and illuminating it and empowering it as well. And as you can see, uh, they dissolve the uh, opposition, the main opposition, but the uh, uh, there's this uh, this uh, resolving of of tension is created by two not as well known uh, aspects as uh, the normal Ptolemaic aspects, the, the major ones, because there's a tridecile from uh, the Sun, Mars to Saturn and the other four celestial objects, and a quintile from them to Varuna. Now. What are what is the quintile series? Uh, you get quintile when you divide the the circle by five, and you get seventy two. Uh, I'm not sure whether you know it, but it was uh, Johannes Kepler, the uh, the, um, um, the the person who actually he did not invent the telescope because it was Galileo Galilei who invented the telescope, the first one. But Kepler made a better version of it, and actually he became the father of of uh, modern telescopes. And he was also a mathematician and also a an astrologer and an astronomer. And he was playing around with with the the, the normal aspects. He he calculated a number of aspects. For instance, systemic form is moderate is linked to him as well. And he was the one who managed to divide the circle by seven, or by five, sorry, a seven is not linked to him. Someone, someone else, I think Harvey uh, was the one who, who invented the septile, but, uh, but um, Kepler invented a whole series, the, the, the quintile series, which are all linked to ingeniousness. The, uh, the name giver is the septa, uh, the, the, the quintile, 72 degrees. And the other one, the, the other uh, portion of the opposition is the tridecile, three times 36, which is the decile, which is the smallest uh, uh, of the, the series. Uh, the decile is denoting professionalism, everyday talent and everyday professionalism. And the by the, uh, the, the uh, uh, Tricep, tri the style, 108 degrees, is linked to ingeniousness and talent that is manifesting in altered states of consciousness. Why is that, you may ask? Because the 108 is a sacred, sacred number, uh, malas or uh, all kinds of sacred uh, 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 beads have exactly one and one uh, 108 uh, little uh, 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 what is it how do you call it um, pearls let's call them pearls and it, it you know um, you were supposed to say one prayer for each pearl so by the time you finished 108 prayers you were in an old, you, you managed to get into an altered state of consciousness and you were direct talking to God. So that's why uh, anyone uh, who has a lot of 108 degrees in their charts are usually people who get into altered states of consciousness and then they are brilliant. And if they don't jot them down these ideas or they don't follow them immediately, those usually fall out of their minds and all they remember is, well, I wanted to do something and I know it's, it was great, but I don't no, no longer remember. So make sure if you have 108 degrees in your chart and it's relevant, 
let's say between, I don't know, uh, Uranus and, and Mercury, for instance, then you might have some real, really, really br brilliant uh, ideas that need to be jotted down and remembered. Okay, so this is the Mars uh, Sun conjunction. This is how it's dissolving the opposition of today. Uh, use it in good health. And uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, today's episode. And uh, if you are interested, please uh, uh, subscribe to my channel and see you next time. Bye.